Praise the Lord. You are tuning in to the media ministry of Apostle Barbara R. Thomas. This ministry is designed to bring forth revelation and encouragement and to enlighten your minds. Now listen as the woman of God brings you revelation from the word of God. You on this day, this afternoon, this Monday afternoon, I thank God for those of you right now that are tuned in and they're listening. Word of the Lord is becoming so heavy upon the lives of those men and women of God that have been in his presence that has been seeking the Lord uh, with a pure heart. Uh, there is a heaviness upon them concerning the burden of the Lord in this hour. The burden of the Lord is upon his men in this hour. So as uh, the Lord is dealing with them, he is definitely giving them some words to send forth uh, to the people in this hour that would cause them to be in a position of being able to hear what the Spirit is saying even in this hour. This is an hour right now where he is absolutely breaking down some things pertaining to the people. One of the things the Lord has been dealing with me very strategically about is those that are called as pastors, shepherds, leaders, uh, that are leading flocks, that are overseeing people, that are uh, even mentoring anyone that's in a position right now that is leading the people and supposed to be there to help them to get an understanding of their walk of salvation, to push them into their destiny and their purpose and to cause them to know the ways of the Lord and the word of God. Because uh, we're in a hour right now, so many in this hour are forfeiting uh, their positions for other things. In other words, they are uh, going into moments and seasons of compromise that is causing them in this hour to begin to speak and say some things that are causing the people to be put in a position to where they are getting spiritually uh, devoured, spiritually slaughtered, uh, spiritually sl slain by the enemy because they are not Lord that will bring them into a solid and secure relationship with the Lord according to his standards of holiness and righteousness that he has laid uh, as a foundation for us to follow even in this hour. Uh, I know that we're dealing with a lot of uh, pastors and leaders, uh, mentors, covering shepherds, whichever one you want to be called in this hour. Uh, we're dealing with a lot of them in this hour right now that have lost lost the ability to feel the hearts of the people. Uh, they lost their ability to be able to uh, uh, discern when those that they're supposed to be uh, leading is hurting, bleeding, or going through traumatic experiences. Now, I do want to uh, get an understanding even on today that there are times because sometimes leaders have so much on them that maybe they might miss it every now and then pertaining to what they are concerned about and that they need uh, someone to help them in. A lot of times, even as I'm dealing with a lot of people that uh, 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 put some time on a pretense of wanting help and wanting support and wanting you to help them get to their destiny, that they are not being truthful even about the things that they are dealing with, the issues and different things that are going on. But the thing about it, people of God, we got to get in a place now. 23rd chapter, he really began to take me into it because, uh, and I've, I've talked about it before, and I know I have, hallelujah, but he is really impacting this very heavy right now. Because there's a demand being put on the men and women of the Lord right now to gather his sheep. Hallelujah. And because why? Because it is the, oh my God, it is the leaders that have allowed things to go on and to take place and to cause the people to be scattered. 
becoming uh, compromisers. Uh, uh, they have become uh, pastors that that scatter rather than those that gather. They have become scatterers in this hour. We're seeing too many of the people becoming dissatisfied with being among the congregation of the righteous. We should be able uh, in this hour to have uh, us together together as a corporate unit, come on, among each other and be able hallelujah in that setting but what we are experiencing right now is what is taking place hallelujah and what Jeremiah 23 is talking about in this hour and the Lord began to say this is the hour now the sin for a word of warning unto the shepherds unto the pastors unto the leaders unto the mentors I don't care what capacity you're in five oh hallelujah whatever capacity of leadership you you are in. I don't care if you're over the usher board. If you are a leader in this capacity, if you're leading people, if you're over people, if you're supposed to be a person that would cause direction and instructions and giving advice or anything of that nature. <laughs> He said, send forth a warning unto them this day and let them know that I'm not pleased with the scattering of the sheep in this hour. Now, I know a lot of the leaders going to say, well, you don't know what the sheep are doing, but let me help you out real good. A lot of things that they learned, they learned sitting under leadership hear me good, hallelujah, and you're supposed to be an example for them, oh my God, hallelujah, one thing I do know, if you stand as a godly example before the people, hallelujah, if they're genuine about wanting to be right, if they're genuine about wanting to be about the Father's business, then they will see change in you and begin to change themselves, listen, when I came in, my leader didn't have to tell me anything, I watched their lives, I watched the older saints. I watched the saints of God. Hallelujah. And I began to ask God to give me the same spirit they had where they loved the Lord. Where they didn't want to do anything to be displeasing to him. Come on. I began to look at their example. And their example. Nobody had to tell me that I couldn't wear my mini skirts no more. Nobody uh, To church. Hallelujah. Didn't nobody have to tell me. Hallelujah. That I couldn't wear. Hallelujah. They call them sizzler shorts at that time, but they are what they're wearing now, which are the booty shorts. Hallelujah. Didn't nobody have to tell me that. I knew as I began to watch the people of God, I saw them. Hallelujah. And their example. Hallelujah. Came to me. Hallelujah. And helped me without a word being opened up to me. I didn't nobody have to jam it down my throat that I had to cover up my breast. Didn't nobody have to tell me anything. Thing. Then nobody really had to tell me that I needed to change my attitude. I begin to see the love of the saints. I begin to see how they walked in love even toward each other. And this is the thing that we're missing also is godly examples in the body of Christ that are by being a pastor or being a shepherd or being a mentor. Hear me good. Hallelujah. It's not to say that you, and my God, that God won't give you how to, and my God, take your gifts and things. Um, and, and what I'm talking about, your talents, your natural talent, and use them. Hallelujah. If you, are, if you got a degree in psychology, yes. If you're going to counsel the people, yes, you can. You can. You can. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. But what I'm talking about is we have begun to make merchandise of the people. All we want to do is get a company of people, a congregation, so that we can build our own, hey my God, greed up, my God. Hallelujah. So the Lord began to talk to me and it says, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastors, said the Lord. He said, listen, woe be unto you. This is a warning. This is not something that's just being said cute in the Bible. This is a warning to those of you that are scattering the sheep. Hallelujah. And destroying them. Them. This is a warning to those of you that are taking the sheep and you are misusing them and abusing them. My God, this
this is a warning. He is saying, in this hour, my God, I am going to visit the shepherds that are destroyed and scatter my sheep, my God. I'm going to visit them with a, oh my God, with an iron hand of correction. In this hour, the Holy Ghost began to tell me, he said, listen, you're going to release this word. It's going to cause some leaders to get upset with you because they're not about Kosiah, because they don't want the people to understand that they don't have to take the abuse that is being given unto them. Many of you, oh my God, are being abused because of the honor you have for your leadership. Hear me good. Hear me good. Hear me good. You allow them to abuse you because you walk in a, a my God, in, 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 a, in a spirit of honor. Hear me good. And they're taking advantage of you honoring them. What they're doing is offering you, hallelujah, imaginary positions and titles. Hey, glory. Ooh, to keep you under their bondage so that they can use you to build their umpires. What about Kosiah? Hey, my God. I hear the Holy Ghost saying they want to deal you being hurt, my God, misused through the hardships, oh my God, of labor, oh my son of the Hosiah, hallelujah, and they have taken advantage of you because you walk in a spirit of honor and you honor them because they are a leader, but the Holy Ghost said, they're taking that honor and they're manipulating it, my God, to them Hosiah, because you, hey, my God, because they know you're a person of principle. Hosiah, hallelujah, yeah, hallelujah, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, God, hallelujah. You're a person of principle, and because you're a person of principle, you will allow yourself to be put in those Oh my God, those treatments of being misused and abused because you're a person of principle. You're a person that walks in the principles of the word of the Lord and they know it and they're using it against you. They're using it against you. I'm going to say it again. They're using it that you are a person of honor and integrity and the integrity in you will not allow you Hallelujah. The stand up sometime. Oh my God. For what you know. Hey my God. Hallelujah. Is being done wrong to you. See they have taught us. Oh God. Hallelujah. And they have took the scripture. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. And used it as a battering ram. Oh God. To beat the people down. To make them not question, oh God, the behavior, oh my God, of their leader. Let me tell you something. The Lord told me this. He told me this. Hallelujah. He told me this. He said, daughter, just like the sheep are accountable to you, you accountable to the sheep. In other words, he said, who are you? To not answer a question in the kingdom of God. I'm not talking about them. But I'm talking about accountable sheep. Oh God. Oh God. I'm about to mess up right there. I'm a, hey my God. Because leaders huh, sometimes think that they're exempt. Having an answer to the sheep that they're governing. When they need to know certain things. Yes, there are certain things that they have the right to question you about. Especially if they see questionable behavior. Where you have to explain some things. Even though there are things that God might tell a leader to do. Uh, some, and, and I know, uh, you know, people say this, that, and the other. But they have a right, if they don't understand, to ask you, what are you doing? to ask you, uh, uh, why are you going this way? Uh, especially if it's something they have never seen before, especially if it's something puzzling, especially if it looks like it's something controversial uh, that look like it go against the will of the Father. Uh, yeah, they have the right to question you. They have the right to ask you. 
leaders. What are you doing? What good is it to have a congregation that's nothing but robots? Hello? How to do it? In my coach, I give them an answer to the things that they're questioning us about. We'll rather browbreak them, hear me good, how to do it, or begin to, hey my God, intimidate them with the word. We feel like nobody has the right, hallelujah, to question what we're doing. And, and, and hey my God, hallelujah, and, and that's not fair. For you to want them to be accountable to you, but you don't want to be accountable. It works both ways. Loyalty works both ways. That was a lesson that, that all of us in leadership need to learn and have to learn. How to do you in this hour? How to do you? So the Lord began to tell me that in this hour, there's a great scattering and there's a great destruction that is going on from leadership because what they're doing, they forgot to have a burden for the people. And all they're looking at them as right now is someone to help pay bills. Oh my God. Or the call them to become uh, known and famous. Mm -hmm. How they do it. So he said, woe be unto you. Woe be unto you. If you destroying and scattering my sheep, said the Lord. He said, therefore thus said the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that be my people. You have scattered my flock. Hallelujah. That's the first thing we need to establish flock. Hallelujah. You just covering it, but it is his flock. Hallelujah. The sheep belong to him. Hallelujah. That's why you'll get in trouble, pastors, leaders. That's why you're going to get in trouble because you have forgotten that the sheep belong to him. The flock is his, my God. He just allowed you to govern them, but the flock belongs to him. He said, so, yeah, you feed my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Hallelujah. You'll hurt them. You abuse them, you take advantage of them, you wound them, you strip them, and you drive them away, and then you don't even try to rectify the situation. I have not seen as many pastors as I've seen in this hour that think that they above saying, I'm sorry, when they have done something wrong to the sheep. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Hallelujah. He said, you're driven away and you have not visited him. Behold, I will visit upon you the evils of your doings, said the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, listen, see what you have did. You scattered my flock. You drove them away. And then you didn't even try to go get them. Hallelujah, my God. You didn't have a concern. Hallelujah, about the soul that you have wounded, that you have hurt. Hallelujah. You don't have a concern. Hey, my God. And let me tell you this. Even if you let people in the congregation hurt the flock, it's still going to be held accountable to your hand because you need to correct those. God, many times, my God, we have set back, hallelujah, and allowed people because maybe they have a financial status or the Amakushin of Mohosiah. Hey, my God, and sometimes even those that are close to us, we allow them to hurt and harm the sheep, and we don't chastise, rebuke, and correct them. So even if you don't, oh my God, hallelujah, do it personally. When you allow others, oh my God, leadership positions, you're also held accountable for the actions of those that you have put in leadership position. You held accountable if they hurt the flock. You're held accountable, my God, because you placed them, you put them there. You allow them the ability to walk in that position of leadership where you gave them authority to do things through the block. Hallelujah. And so if they hurt them, if they wound them, you're still held accountable. Hallelujah. You put them in that position and you put a person in a position that has scattered and destroyed the sheep. Oh my God. So you're held accountable leaders. 
You can't be sweeping this stuff under the rug anymore. You can't turn a deaf ear, hallelujah, and a closed eye to those that you have put in position just because they bring in finances or something, some kind of gift to the table. Hallelujah. And you, hey my God, and, and I'm a kusha, and I heard the Lord said many have allowed those that have been with them for a long time, oh my God, hallelujah, to strip, hey my God, hallelujah, and scrape my mashekur and my kusha, and cut the sheep. Hallelujah, because they've been there a long time and you have not corrected them. You have not set them in order. You have not put them, oh my God. Hallelujah, head glory. Hallelujah, in, in a place of correction. You know what the Lord began to tell me? He said as many that they have loose as leadership in the wrong congregation that need to go back and sit in a school of administration. My God, hallelujah. Why they're in the leadership position, and we have put people, oh my God, hallelujah, oh my God, that are in position that have hurt the sheep rather than help them, oh my God, and then you sit there and allow them to continue to scatter the sheep rather than dealing with the situation because of what they bring to the ministry. You will allow them to sit there and wound, hurt, and cause pain to those in the flock. So the Lord said, woe unto you. You didn't even, you didn't even pain to them. You didn't even go and repent to them for what happened to them under your leadership. Oh my God. How to do it? Under your leadership. You didn't even go repent for how you allow the enemy to use you or those that you have put in leadership to hurt them. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. They don't exempt the pew members either. Hallelujah. They need to be put in check too because some of them have scattered and destroyed the flock. Hallelujah. So the Lord said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. But then he turns around and said how he's going to gather his remnant. Hallelujah. Of his flock out of countries, whether I have driven them and bring them again to their fold and they shall be fruitful and increase. Let me tell you what's getting ready to happen to those that have been driven out of the church. Uh oh. That have been driven from away from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Where they gather together in his name. Hallelujah. Doesn't mean they left the Lord or anything. Hallelujah. Don't most. Because if you've been wounded and hurt and do not have not been healed and made whole. Hallelujah. You're dealing with some things. Hallelujah. And we can skip on past it. Hallelujah. But but what we're dealing with some things. And this is what has caused a lot of people to be mistrustful of leaders and distrustful even of the body of Christ is because they have dealt with people, hallelujah, whose character needed improvement, who doesn't didn't walk in integrity, who was dishonorable, hallelujah, they, they have had to deal with them and abuse them for their finances, their time, and their talents. Hear me good, hallelujah. It, it is very strange that even in this day and hour, the Lord, hallelujah, has to deal with the men and women of God about saying they're sorry, hallelujah, to those that have hurt, hallelujah. The Lord began to show me the pride in many of those that are in leadership in this hour, and this is why they take that scripture, hallelujah, to try to keep you in a vulnerable state under them. This is why they no harm and use it as a weapon because instead of them admitting that they did wrong, they would rather make it seem as if you were the one that did everything rather than admit hallelujah that they did some things that might have not hallelujah even if they did it unknowingly or in ignorance hallelujah they still need to repent for the pain they have caused the people hallelujah but I have not seen the magnitude because sometimes I I, I, I get sheep that have been wounded and hurt and no longer in the church and, and I try to deal with the leaders that they were under that wounded them and the greatest battle I have is them admitting that they were wrong and just saying they're sorry to the person. Sometimes those two little words, I'm sorry, will break some yokes, bring about a restoration, uh, 
re restore relationships, come on, and, 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 and all that, and bring healing, hallelujah, to a person's heart. But instead of them saying that, because they're a leader, they feel like if I say I'm sorry, then I'm looking weak before the sheep. But I'm sorry is the strongest words, hallelujah, when you have done wrong, that the sheep can be able to hear from you. Hallelujah. Hey, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm talking about a true repentance. I'm not talking about this stuff what I've seen them do now. Well, you know, I, I'm just going to say I'm sorry. Hallelujah. If that's going to get you back in the church. No. No, baby. That's not how it works. That's not how it go. Hallelujah. You need to see the error that you did and begin to work on it. An hour, my God, that are hurt themselves and wounded, and they're trying to lead people that are wounded. Come on, how can you how can you help them? Hallelujah! If you're bleeding the same kind of way they bleed, if you're bleeding from the same kind of wound they have, how are you going to help them? How are you going to help them get healed? Hallelujah! If you're bleeding from the same kind of wound that they have, Hallelujah! If you're bitter, Hallelujah! Koshaya, Hallelujah! If you're bitter, if you're angry, hallelujah, how are you going to heal the sheep? This is what is causing the scattering in this hour because we have leaders that are wounded. Hallelujah, choke up in their emotions and in their mental mind. And sometimes they try to hide it and mask it. Hallelujah. You know what the Lord began to tell me? He said some of them are running around talking about they got new revelation. Hallelujah. But the old concept hallelujah, of forgiveness, they casting that out. And so they'll begin to make it seem as if the people are wrong and they all right. And they begin to do things. My God. That you don't become so self-righteous yourself, my God. Hallelujah. And prideful and lifted up. Hallelujah. Puffed up within yourself. Hallelujah. Because you will find yourself in a continual cycle of hurting and abusing the people of God. You'll find yourself in a continual cycle of not being able to keep nobody. The reason why some of your ministries can't grow, because you have not grown. Oh my God. You have not grown. My God. You still dealing with issues. My God. Hallelujah. That you should have been delivered from. But rather than to get deliverance, Hallelujah. You'll keep on wounding the sheep. Rather than to face the fact that you're the reason why your church is not growing, your ministry is not expanding, hallelujah, that you don't have nobody that wants to work with you, rather than admit it's you, you'll go around and point the finger at everybody else, but the Lord said, wow, be unto you for scattering my sheep and destroying my flock, hallelujah, so he said, I'm going to gather them, hallelujah, and out of the body of Christ, those now that don't even want to come among the body of believers, oh my God, because of what they have experienced, those now are getting ready to return <laughs> to the hand of the Lord, and he said when they return, they will be fruitful and they will increase, they will increase in every area of their life, they will be fruitful Oh my God, hallelujah, which means they'll no longer be barren because of what they have experienced and what they have went through. Some of them have dried up because of pastors that have scattered them. Some of them are barren now. Oh my God, hallelujah, because spiritually, they're clogged up and there's nothing that can be released. My God, because there's blockage. So they can't release anything. They can't birth nothing. They can't bring nothing forth because there's blockage there. But the Holy Ghost said to tell you, hallelujah, those of you, oh my God, they have a distaste for the body of Christ, from being around the body of believers because of what you have encountered and went through. Hallelujah. You are getting ready to become real fruitful and you shall increase. Oh God, in this hour, the Holy Ghost wants you to know that today. And then he said, this is what I'm going to do. When I bring them back, I'm going to set up shepherds over them which shall feed them and they shall fear no more, lacking. 
said the Lord. He said, now I'm getting ready to set you up with a shepherd that's going to care about your soul and want to see you increase, want to see you grow, want to see you become everything the Lord has purposed for you to be. He said, I'm getting ready to set you up with a shepherd. Hear me good. They will be on, they going to feed you. Oh my God. Hallelujah. They going to feed you, not starve you. Hallelujah. Head glory. And hey, and you shall not fear no more. The reason why some Hallelujah. And see, and my Goshiah, you're going to be healed even of that spirit of offense that have came up on you because you have been offended by scattering leaders. Oh my God. Oh, they my Goshiah. You've been, hey, my God. You have been, hey, my daughter, you have been hurt by scattering leaders. Hallelujah. And so the Lord is in none of our Goshiah. I heard him say, I'm going to mend your brokenness now. Oh my God. And so some of you have been feeling what the Lord is showing them concerning you. You'll begin to run. Hear me good. The Holy Ghost said, there are, there are also sheep that are running from their deliverance. Oh my God. Because they don't want to face sometimes the fact that you allowed yourself to get in the predicament that you and then some of you find yourself, hallelujah, connected to the same old kind of leader over and over again. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Some of you are stickling for punishment. Hallelujah. Uh, God began to tell me something concerning that. Hallelujah. He said in the my Koshiah. Hallelujah. He said that familiar spirit is just following them because they don't understand that the enemy is trying to set you up for failure, set you up. Hallelujah. For your spiritual demise. Oh, my God. Satan does doesn't want you to walk in who you are in the Lord. Hallelujah. So he keeps bringing, oh my God, hallelujah, shepherds to come forth, hallelujah, and to connect with you. And they do the same thing as the last one do because it's a familiar spirit that is following you. And you haven't gotten victory over it yet. My God, hallelujah. And that's why you keep encountering the same thing over and over and over again. Hallelujah. And that's why you keep, hallelujah, finding yourself, embracing the same people over and over again. And then I'm going to help the leaders, my God, because now God giving me an answer to a question that was given. They find themselves, hallelujah, being a stickler for those, and there's a familiar spirit that becomes attached and they find themselves, hallelujah, seeing the same old people, the same old pattern of people in their lives over and over again because they have not gotten victory over that thing. They have not gotten victory over that spirit that's in them, being a spirit of sabotage, a spirit of this, a spirit of that. Hallelujah. It's a familiar spirit. So it's a familiar spirit. So, so some of you, you're saying that is your ministry, but it's not your ministry. It's your misery to keep you distracted so that you, hallelujah, won't get to the fullness of the purpose and the mandate that the Lord has for your life. And so some of you are experiencing a greatness. You feel, oh my God, you say, you say, you're experiencing these same old people over and over again. It works both ways. Hallelujah. The sheep are attaching the shepherds that have misused them over and over again. And then there are shepherds. Oh my God. That are keep on dealing with the same familiar spirit. And you have got it in your mind. Oh God, this is the answer. Hallelujah. You have gotten into your mind that these are the people the Lord is sending and not recognizing it's a familiar spirit of distraction that the enemy is trying to put in your life. And so you keep on embracing the same kind of people, same people, same people over and over and over again until the Lord finally gets you to a place hallelujah where you become victorious hallelujah my God because let me tell you what the Lord began to show me he said because so uh, so many leaders want to seem as if they're the answer oh God they allow themselves also to connect to people with great problems but they don't necessarily mean they're your problem but we are connect to them. Hallelujah. To try to prove a point. Hallelujah. Oh God. Hallelujah. So the Lord began to deal with me. But he said, woe unto you. Hallelujah. He said, now. 
I'm going to set shepherds over them that's going to feed them. Huh? They're not going to fear no more. They're not going to be afraid. How to do this hour because they're going to see the godliness of these shepherds in this hour. They're going to see them walk in integrity and honorable. Oh my God. They're going to see character that betrays the attributes of Christ. These are shepherds the Lord said. Remember, he said, I give you pastors after my heart. Hallelujah. Listen, this is what he's doing right now. This is why. And I don't care about those that get mad. Hallelujah. Because I say this, but some people are they know my course are are under the wrong shepherd because that shepherd don't they are. They have no idea of their identity. They don't know what God had called them to do. Hallelujah. They don't know nothing. They can't teach them. They can't train them in their assignment or anything because that's not the person that has been given the assignment to teach and train them. And it doesn't matter about these leaders making these subliminal posts and everything. Hallelujah. Because I notice a lot of times after uh, my lives, I, I see a whole lot of subliminal posts even from sons and daughters that's supposed to be with me hear me real good because what because I challenge you in the things that are causing you to be out of order with God I'm not gonna shut my mouth hallelujah just because you connected to me I'm gonna tell you about yourself too come on now and when God give me a word that word is for everybody he tell me to go public he's saying this is a word from hey, my God for the nations this is not just a word hallelujah just for a certain people this is a word for everybody including me who you think he deals with first he deals with me first concerning anything Hallelujah. That's why I don't just jump and let stuff out. I ponder. I lay. Oh my God. In the oh my God. And listen to see. God, what is this? What do I need to see? What I need to know about this? Hallelujah. Before I release it to the people. Come on. Hallelujah. What do I need to correct about myself in this word? When I'm giving a word, I'm just not giving it to you. I'm talking it to myself also. Because the Lord is speaking. And the word that come out of my mouth is not my minds is his which means i'm under the umbrella of that word just like you warned to me i can prophesy woe to myself hear me good hallelujah so we got to get past that because we got to be able to hear what thus say the lord in this hour because we're losing too many people back into different things this is why they search it this is why the witches can get them this is why the new age is captivating their mind because we're scattering them and we're destroying them and instead of us trying to rectify and bring reconciliation and restoration we're too prideful to tell them I'm, I had an issue but the Lord has delivered me hallelujah and I'm ready to be a pastor to you like I was supposed to be listen we are not trying to help the sheep we're keeping them scattered and torn apart but the Holy Ghost said tell the shepherds in this hour tell the leaders in this hour woe unto you if you cause my people to run from my presence any longer. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my shellable Hosiah. Hallelujah. He said. Hallelujah. I'm bringing them back to me. Hallelujah. Oh, my, my, Shia. He said, not only the shepherds, even the prophets in that, in that portion of scripture. He's talking about how his heart is broken because of the prophets. Hallelujah. Oh, hey, my God. Hallelujah. He talks about that. Hallelujah. The prophet begins to talk about how his heart was broken within him because of the prophets. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. He said, because for because of swearing, the land mourned. Oh, the pleasant place of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, said the Lord. And that's the thing the Lord was talking to me about. Hallelujah. As I was going down the highway, he began to talk to me about the wickedness of the hearts of the people. He began to show me the wickedness even in a greater measure among the body of believers. He said, in his house. 
Hallelujah. The people have became profane. My God, they have became unholy. They have become unrighteous. They have become people. They call good evil and evil good. They have become people. They are full of folly and error. Come on. Hallelujah. And not only that, hallelujah, the prophets in this hour, he said they prophesied in Baal. Oh my God. And they and they caused the people, hallelujah, the error. My God. Hallelujah. He said they commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of the evildoers that none do it to return from his wickedness. Oh my God. They are all of them unto me. And Solomon and the inhabitants them of Eskimaya. He said, listen, the prophets in this hour, I look at them like I look at the people in Sodom and Gomorrah. Hallelujah. Same spirit. Hey, my God. Mm, same perverseness. My God. Same activity in my name. They have caused my people to error because they prophesy lies and deceit unto my people. And they look just like the people of Solomon Gomorrah to me. Hallelujah. You hear me real good. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. And my God. Hallelujah. He said, I never know Hosiah. Hallelujah. Oh my God. He said, they, 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 they have sent, they have sent evil forth in the earth. Hallelujah. And this is the hour right now that he's raising up a people that's going to challenge them. Oh my God. He said, I'm going to give you pastors. After my heart, they're going to be able to challenge these pastors that are out of order. They're going to be able to challenge them in this hour. They're coming. They're coming to challenge you. If you out of order, they're coming to challenge you. The real men and women of God. And they ain't going to have to have no iPhone title or any of those things. These are holy men. Holy women. My God. These are people that have been in the face of God. These are those that have crucified their flesh and the lust thereof. These are people whose minds have been renewed and they have come out of their carnality. These are those that are not in bondage to the religion, oh my God, religious system of the church. But they're coming to challenge those words that are being spoken that have caused the people to error uh, and to run at the wickedness. Uh, he said they coming in this hour uh, and they coming to tear down uh, every stronghold uh, that has been built uh, by the false apostles, uh, the false prophets, uh, and the false teachers in this hour. Uh, they coming uh, to tear down uh, what they have built uh, as perverse. Uh, they coming to tear down uh, and to bring back uh, the standards of holiness uh, and right to the people uh, back in reverence fear uh, pertaining to the Lord. Uh, they coming in this hour. Uh, they coming to lift up a standard uh, in the house of God. Uh, they coming to lift up a standard of holiness uh, among the people. Uh, they coming to lift up the name of the Lord uh, as a strong tower uh, in the lives of the people. Uh, they're coming. Uh, they coming to do it this hour. Uh, and you gonna have to uh, be ready for them. Uh, they will not shut up. Uh, they will not run away. Uh, they will stand strong uh, and mighty. A remnant of hundred of a hosiah. Uh, a remnant of warriors. Uh, coming forth in this hour to break him and destroy the yokes of the enemy that have caused the people to be weakened and profane before the Lord hallelujah hey glory hallelujah oh God hallelujah 
You're going to have to walk in the attributes of Christ in this hour. We pine the enemy now. We come against strongholds of the mind on the day and we're decreeing that your mind be made new. Hallelujah. We take authority now. Hallelujah. Over your desire for the ways of the world. We're coming against it now. It's time now to put a demand on the men and women of God to live holy and righteous. You're going to have to be an example in this hour. Hallelujah. You're not going to lead the people astray. Hallelujah. With the foolishness of your flesh, my God. Hallelujah. We come to address the issues. We come to address pastors that are destroying the sheep. Oh, no, no, no. We're not going to allow it in this. We're in the hour right now where we're going to turn. We're going to turn from the perverse ways we have went. Hallelujah. And then I'm my Koshaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my God. And perverse doesn't mean nothing but taking away from the original intent of something. Hallelujah. And hey my God. Hear me good. We're going to take the people back to the original blue pit of the Lord. Well, holiness. Hallelujah. The Bible said holiness will exalt a nation. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. We need to take, hey, my God, bring the nations back. Hallelujah. For those of you, wherever you live, whatever country, hallelujah, we need to bring the nations back. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, to holiness. Hallelujah. Because holiness exalts a nation. Hallelujah. When you have morality overriding immorality, oh, my God, hallelujah, then you're going to see a mighty move of God take place among the people in this hour. It's time now. Hallelujah. If you are in, it's time for you to get it right before the Lord and begin to walk holy circumspect before the people and before the world. It's time out. The world had mocked us. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Pointed the finger at us. You know what the Lord let me hear was hissing. Hallelujah. 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 And the Holy Ghost said they're hissing at us. Oh my God. Hallelujah. In mockery. Oh Jesus. My God. Hallelujah. In mockery. They're hissing. They're whispering. Oh God. And then the Holy Ghost said now they're becoming bold with with their accusations against the body of believers. And we got to get in a place now. Hallelujah. It's time now. Hallelujah. It's time to get in a place with God. Hallelujah. Well, we'll begin to walk holy. Hallelujah. Circumspect before him. Hallelujah. We're binding up the enemy that's causing us, even in this hour, hallelujah, to to to, the Namakoshaya. Hallelujah. To the Namakoshaya. To even shut our mouths against these things. Hallelujah. If we would have spoke up, it wouldn't have never got this far in the body of Christ. But we begin to compromise, hallelujah, as leaders, hallelujah, because we became, hallelujah, fearful, hallelujah, and didn't trust the Lord, hallelujah. And once you stop trusting God and you start trusting, hallelujah, oh God, hallelujah. So he said they begin to compromise because they lost their faith in him. So on today, hallelujah, I just dropped on for a few minutes, hallelujah, to let the shepherds know, hallelujah, that we got to stop scattering the sheep, hallelujah, it's time for us, hallelujah, and some of you, hallelujah, even as I was speaking, the Lord says some of you need to find some people and repent to them, hallelujah, and my God, sometimes just those words will give them the breakthrough that they need, hallelujah, just to know that you are conscious of how you wounded them. Hallelujah. And we know because we always tell the sheep to come back and repent and they do some of them. Hallelujah. But the leaders 
get so puffed up in pride so they don't feel like the word I'm sorry should even come out of their mouth. Hallelujah. Sometimes even as a leader, you got to apologize. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even when you're standing on something that you look, you just got to apologize. Hallelujah. Sometimes we just got to let them know, listen, baby. Hallelujah. During that time, I might have made an error. During that time, I might have spoken presumptuously about the situation before I sought the Lord to really get a clarity about what you were trying to tell me. And then as the sheep, you got to just come honest to your shepherd. Hallelujah. And just really come honest. To now, I'm not talking about getting disrespectful and dishonorable. Because, you know, you got to be careful what you say to sheep in this day and hour. Because some of them uh, already got a rebellious and disobedient spirit. So, the said, I can tell you off, the devil is a liar. Even if you're coming to them, you come to them with respect. And you approach them with respect. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm not telling you to come to them, talking to them any kind of way, and saying any old thing you want to say. You got to be careful even how you do that because the Lord still sees them as his leader. Okay? Uh, Aaron and Marion got in trouble. How to do it for just even questioning Moses. How to do it about the, first off, about the wife he married. And then he, they questioned him about his relationship with the Lord. And the Lord had to rebuke them himself and let them know. God had to tell them. Listen. I, I, listen. I talked to Moses face to face. I don't talk to you like that. Hallelujah. And then turned around. Hallelujah. And the thing, you know what I've been, I noticed about that, that Aaron was getting away with some stuff. I said, Aaron, was, first off, he made the golden calf. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. Then he turned around. In this situation, he he was talking too, but Marion was the one that got the leprosy. You hear me? Hallelujah. And so I, I how to do here. But they begin to talk against Moses. How to do you? Even though they were anointed, even though they were chosen, they had, you know, uh, they walked in because called Marion a prophetess. Come on, Aaron was the priest. Even though they had titles and different things. Come on. How to do you? Even though they had those titles. How to do you? They still had to be honorable to the one the Lord had put in authority. So even when you're coming to talk to your leader, if you come to them in a righteous way, if they are real good and mature, because some of these people ain't went through nothing to, to get to that place of maturity and understanding. But if they're really in that place, hallelujah, they will listen to you. Hallelujah. The worst thing you can do, I'm, I'm just going to talk about me, is try to come to me and talk to me any old kind of way. I'm going to automatically tune you out. I, I Really, I am. I'm all magnitude you out because you're talking to me like you think I'm crazy or something. Come on, uh, talking to me in your kind of way, and especially hollering and all that stuff, and 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 and, and you know all that stuff. And then the Lord began to deal with me also, even about these prophets in this hour, and and their mouth being unclean. How to do here? And the Lord said, He said, Hey, my Shia. He said they got unclean mouths, daughter. Which means at any given time, corruption can be in their prophecies. He said because they are, their mouths are unclean. Oh God. Which means there's an unclean spirit in them. the enemy attaches to that and will be able to manipulate them even into speaking things that are not from me. Oh God. And they'll think just because it's accurate that it was me. He said, this is where my people have been in error because they have accepted those kind of behaviors from the people that say they're prophets, oh God, and leaders. How to do Who's really talking through them? He said, there's an unclean spirit in them for them to feel like they can be saying something that they say, I'm saying, and I put in their mouth. And in the course of it, something comes out that's totally the opposite of who I am. So he has been really, really dealing with me about the shepherds. Oh, God. Hallelujah. And, and the sheep. Hallelujah. And he said, woe be unto them. Hallelujah. Woe be unto them. Woe be unto them. 
in this hour. So for those of you that will take heed to the word, if you know you need to repent, just repent, please. Hallelujah. Because the judgment of the Lord is upon the shepherds in this hour, the leaders in this hour, the judgment, hallelujah, the judgment means correction, rebuke, hearing the discipline, hallelujah, this is what he's bringing, hallelujah, and this is why sometimes things are not prospering, because the Lord don't want you to continue in that corrupt state, it's, and don't think so highly of yourself as you ought, hallelujah, but stay in a humble way, hallelujah, so that the spirit of the Lord can convict your heart when you get out of order, when you become prideful and lift it up like that, you don't want to receive correction, hallelujah, so I thank God, hallelujah, and then got to understand your, your intercessors and prayer warriors have been given the authority by God to pray for you. Which means they see some things. And if they come to you as a leader and say, listen, uh, I was praying and the Lord began to show me some things. Don't you sit up there and tell them because they ain't got a five-fold title that they can't say nothing to you. They call the pray and cover you. Which means God going to show them some things about you. You better get it together. How to do here. And stop sitting up there trying to make cause your title that you can't be corrected. He'll use who he want to correct you. When when baby was going the wrong way, he used the donkey he was on. Huh? The, 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 and asked him, do, you don't see that angel up there with the sword about to kill us? You don't see him? Why? Because he was blind. How did, oh God, that's in the Bible shot. He was blind and couldn't see the danger. How did do you? Because he was puffed up in his cell and he couldn't see the danger. That was before him. So sometime when you refuse to hear. God have people that can see. Hallelujah. And they can see. And they can warn you. Of the danger that's before you. Don't be puffed up in pride. Because at first. He didn't see nothing. Come on. He beat the animal and everything else. Because he couldn't see. And the animal had to tell him. Come on. Listen, there's an angel about to kill us up here. Come on. I ain't going no farther. But we don't want to hear people because they don't have great titles. Come on. Hallelujah. But guess what? The Lord showed me. When they, when they know you're a true prophet or a true man or woman of God, when they really in trouble, they will find you. Hallelujah. When they really need an answer, they'll find you. Don't get to that position. They don't want to hear those. Because they feel like you ain't got a great title or something. Hallelujah. To, to be able to tell them. I've heard many in leadership say that they can't talk to me because they beneath my title. Are you crazy? God will use who he wants. Guess what? If Eli would have said that to Samuel. Come on. Samuel hadn't even knew the voice of the Lord yet. Hear me good. Because when he was calling, he didn't know that was God's voice. Hear me good. But God gave him a word for Eli. Hear me good. Hallelujah. He didn't know. Hey, he gave us true. My God. And it happened just like he said, even though he hadn't knew the voice of God yet. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. You better hear me this morning. Hallelujah. This afternoon. Oh, God. Hallelujah. You better hear me today. Hallelujah. Because the Lord is saying, some of you miss your warning before destruction. Because you didn't want to hear the person. Because they didn't walk in the same title as you. Your words. And the Holy Ghost said to tell you today. It's time to repent. Hallelujah. Some of you got to find some people. And repent. Hallelujah. Because some of them don't went all the way back to the world. For that. Hallelujah. And and, and I'm not shy. And, and he's not just saying it for nothing. Hallelujah. Saying it because he wants you to understand that it's time for you to repent and do it again. Hallelujah. And then there are those of you that are sheep, you know you don't wall them shepherds out. You need to be repenting to them too. It works both ways. I'm a person of balance. Don't you ever forget that. Hallelujah. Just like you want the shepherds to repent, some of you as sheep need to repent because you gave them, them shepherds trouble while you was up on them. 
hallelujah, just rebellious and disobedient and challenging them and coming against them and didn't want to submit. And I, and even in this day and hour, because folks don't want to be committed, loyal, come on, hallelujah, and honorable toward men and women of God, hallelujah, they're doing everything in their power, hallelujah, to use any old excuse so that they won't have to get into that state of commitment. But on today, hallelujah, it's some repentance that needs to go forth in the land. Hallelujah. But those of you that have been genuinely hurt by leaders, he's getting ready to bless you and increase you. And you're getting ready to see the goodness of the Lord prevail in your life. Don't think it strange that it's at this time he wants you to know that he has been genuinely concerned about you. Hallelujah. Hear the word of the Lord on today. Make the adjustments and the necessary things that are necessary in order for you to close any door that is standing open that is causing you to not be able to go into the fullness of all doors today. Just sometime two words, I'm sorry will close the door to affliction, to close the door. Hallelujah. Because, hey, my shy, no, no, boho shy. One thing I know, the Lord loves his sheep. Hallelujah. He loves his people. Hallelujah. And he will fight for his people. Hallelujah. Period. Hallelujah. So none of us is exempt from his judgment when we are out of order or when we have done something that is against the will of God or when we have hurt them from his chastisement and discipline and his rebuke. Hallelujah. Not, I'm going to say it again. None of us. Your title don't exempt you. In fact, you're going to get beat more with more stripes. Hallelujah. When you get there. If you don't get it together. So I bless the Lord for you. For Thank you for tuning in. Hallelujah. Take the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And embrace it. Apply it to your life. If it pertains to you. Just, just accept. Hallelujah. The, the woe. Hallelujah. But turn it. Hallelujah. So that as he is moving. And correcting. And disciplining. Because he don't want his sheep to continue to be battered and bruised. Hallelujah. By unrighteous shepherds. Uh, listen. Repent. So that you won't be caught up. In that discipline. That correction. And that judgment. You be blessed. Hallelujah. And I praise the Lord for you. I thank God for everything he's doing. Be blessed. Know that I love you. I'm praying for you. And most of all. I'm seeking God. Hallelujah. For you to be able. To get in a place against anybody and be pure at heart hallelujah so that when you stand before him you won't hear depart from me ye worker of iniquity i never knew you because your heart was never right your spirit was never converted and your mind was never renewed god bless you have a blessed day You have just finished listening to the media ministry of Apostle Barbara R. Thomas. You may write her at Apostle Barbara R. Thomas, P.O. Box 13291, Durham, North Carolina, 27709. Thank you for supporting the ministry.